What's going on, traders? How we doing out there? Yes, it's another day, Mitch. So smash that like. Let's get this party started and let's find some story stocks. I gotta make some money. It's time for Money Making Mitch. When investors need a story, we're going to the moon. Welcome to Money Mitch, where story is everything. I'm here to find you the next opportunity. It's all about the green hand. Now we all know the bull market is here to stay. Money Mitch. What's going on traders? Let's go ahead and get this party started. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Yes, yes, I'm seeing coin right now. We'll get into that happy. If you want to go ahead and put into the chat the EPS, we'll take a look at that. Uh, you know it, James. Welcome. Welcome. Let's go ahead and let's get it. Let's take a look here at the overall market. What did we see today, guys? One thing I can clearly point out is a sideways action again in the SPY. We've been in this sideways action essentially now for, um, you can say, 15 days, 11 bars here. Uh, we'll see if we can get back above 442s. Really want to get see this get back above 443s, but this sideways action could bring us back down closer towards the support of 436. We'll see if we can keep holding above 441 right now. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Let's take a look at the cues. You interviewed Rajiv Goel, remember? Yes, yes. I definitely will be getting into Pub M a little bit later. We'll go into that. Um, that's actually one that I wanted to take a look at. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But Coin, yes, you got it. There you go. You want to put it up. I'll take a look at coin. Uh, as you can see, it's trading right now pretty pretty significantly. It went down towards 260s. Now back up there to 270s. Let's see if it can get back up there towards 280s where it really spiked into the close. We want to see it get back above that 280s. But as you can see here, the earnings, not bad. And it looked like the, the volume was pretty significantly. I know Spencer mentioned that. I'll go into a little bit more of that as I get details and i can pull up my pro and we can talk more on that let's take a look here on the cues uh the cues not looking that great right now did definitely did do a pullback here let's take a look at the daily chart as you guys can see we were talking about how we wanted to get it back above 370 but that we could get a pullback closer towards this 365 level now the big thing is not breaking that 365. We don't want to get underneath that. We want to come back and curl back above coming towards the 370s. Let's see if we can get that move tomorrow. Even a sideways action day would be good for the Qs. And then we can start coming back up and curling for that 370s. Like always, I'm going to be paying attention to these because – these were what really moved the markets. If you remember that time that we broke out of in the queues and made that massive run, from that moment, we've kind of gone sideways here. So we need to get another driver really to get one of these stocks to make a big move. Now, one thing that I always do is sometimes I take a look at, let's say, what's in the queues? You know, what, what did good today? Well, today, I mean, you can look at Melly, you can look at Ross. Uh, doing great. Look at Melly. Look at this one, guys. Mercado Libre. I remember when we first started talking about this one on the daily when it had kind of this trend line approach. And man, this one has really, really started to get going now up there towards the 18s. This one started the move with shop. Um, this was like an early move that really kind of brought that up. We were talking about that. And I probably even have the time here. May 24th is when we were talking about these uh, nice and early before we got these big moves. But yeah, Pub M, definitely a nice standout there. 8% move. I'll be watching this. I'll be looking for this to get really strong. Um, I, I think you could get a run. One of the things that I did see today is TTD also strong in the same industry and programmatic. Look how TTD did well today. I'm also looking at MGNI in that same industry. Look for that one to get hot tomorrow. If that one can get hot, maybe take out this high here of 36.59. That's MGNI and programmatic. We could see this one really lift and get back above to the 40s. I'm going to keep a watch on some of these. As we can see, there's some trending stocks here. All right, let's go ahead and let's let's catch up with the chat. What's up, Yogi? How we doing? Pave, someone wants to talk about that pave. 
I, I won't be mad. While that's mad interesting, what was the one with shop? That's Melly. That's M E L I, Mercado Libre. This is, it, I would call it like the Spanish Amazon kind of, uh, but it, it's like an Amazon. It's, it, it's definitely gotten a huge run though lately. I mean, the gap up and then a big push out today, two sideways days. Now another push out. I definitely keep this one on watch, but we're getting up towards the high here. I think this one's going to eventually run into a resistance up at 19 fives or 2000. So keep your eyes on that one. We'll see if it keeps running. MG and I is one that could run with pub M and, and definitely uh, Fubo Fubo's running. The, the earnings come out. I was watching to see if Fubo's earnings were going to be good. I love the daily chart. We were talking about this last time that it approached right here at the high. And then we got this sideways trend. I'd love to see sideways trend here. One of the main things that I want to point out on this chart is whenever you get these three times trying to break down the support. So right here, you got it down. Right here, it tried to break support. And then finally, right here, you tried to break support. But what did you get? You got a bullish engulfing candle. Let's take a look at the one minute. There you go. Looks like we got some good earnings. It's been up about eh, about 9% here, 9.5% on the after hours. Good run into the earnings. Let's go ahead and, and let me let me try to pull up here so I can pull up those earnings for us. Um, here, I got my Benzinga Pro ready for me. Let's take a look here at Fubo, see what I can find on the earnings report. Not bad at the end of the day. Looks like they reported a record revenue here. Uh, Fubo delivered re record 130.9 million revenues, 681,721 total subscribers in Q2 21 and raise of 2021 guidance. It's exactly what we want to see, guys. That can definitely push us over the top. The company delivering strong quarter, uh, second quarter results. And I'm going to be watching because I think this one definitely could help out also some other names in the industry. Let's take a look at some of those. Uh, Fubo moving up on this. I'm going to be watching Roku also to see if we can come back tomorrow. This one's been downtrending massively. Are we going to get a bounce in Roku or is it going to come back closer towards this 350s before we get the lift? Uh, Vizio is another one that's breaking down right now. We'll see if this one can recover here and get back above 21 tomorrow. But Fubo, nice move there into after hours. Now really starting to break out. If you look on the hourly chart, we're really starting to push on up. This one could get towards, I say, 34 tomorrow, 34, 35. So keep your eyes on Fubo. A good run there. All right, let's go ahead. Let's get into some of these other plays. Um, some other plays being mentioned in the chat. I want to get through some uh, sector and industry analysis here so let's go ahead and start doing that then we'll go into stocks just from the chat i don't mind going into any of those uh pt prts has lately been on a run sophie i could see it pull back a little bit but i'll, I'll talk to, about that chart in a little bit just make sure that you mention it again i got you all right let's go ahead let's take a look here what did we see move today you guys know i love paying attention to the change since the open daily because i think this is very important sometimes you can have an index be in the red in the morning but as soon as the the market opens it actually goes green immediately giving us a good sign and being at the top of the trend uh, we saw basic materials really start pushing back up there today if we look here on the daily we got a nice push back up if you look here on the industries you had aluminum up 5.5 percent steel up about 4.5 percent coal up about four percent and then copper right behind that uh notable mention i would also pay attention to the industrials metals and minerals just because i've been watching how lithium is going to perform not a bad day there for pll you had about a six percent day but if we look at aluminum we've been talking about aa for a good while now if you guys see this trend line that we've drawn we've talked about this when we created this line the first time it was actually july 9th we were talking about how we started seeing the trend in aluminum come in. Now we've been seeing aluminum really trend. I mean, since that time, you can think about where we're at now. Talk about an 18% gain from those levels and really pushing on up there today, having an 8% up day. Uh, you can also look at steel. We've been looking at X on that one. And we also called out NUE. NUE as an infrastructure play with steel and that could potentially get a nice run. Look at the run that it had today. 
Now it's all the way up there towards 118, breaking out really. I mean, once it got back above 100, it definitely looked good. And this one has continued to run NUE. All right, let's go ahead. Let's take a look. What are some other plays here? Cole, Cole plays making moves. BTU, uh, AMR. Look at that push that that stock's been seeing. Uh, you could take a look at HCC. Let's see if this one gets back up there. I've been looking to see if this one can run. Uh, but let's take a look also at some industrial plays. Now we're moving into the industries a little bit down here. Um, really shipping and ports. I think this was infrastructure talk. You could take a look at some of those. EC, um, you could take a look at DSX, SBLK, Starbolt Carriers. Uh, the, all these kind of get some run when we get these kind of plays, but you got to be careful with these because usually these have low float like SB, uh, NAT. All these have low float, so you got to be careful there. They definitely move rapidly. Uh, let's take a look here at the airlines. Airlines not doing bad. We talked about that we wanted to see how the airlines were going to perform. We see this downtrend. Can it break out of it? We actually saw some of these really start pushing back here. DAL, LUV. Um, we also wanted to talk about JetBlue. JetBlue had a good day, 3% day there. AAL, not a bad day either, 2% up. The one that we said to be careful was saved, and it didn't do bad. It had a 1% up day. Um, I'm definitely being careful with this name because it has a lot of negative press right now. All right, let's go ahead and continue further into consumer cyclicals. I wanted to call out some of these. Uh, if we look at apparel, apparel had an awesome day today, guys. Express with a nice breakout there at $6. We were talking about this stock, I think about literally last week, we were saying the retail could come back. Um, I was even talking about this one in the morning, but let's go ahead. Let's keep move forward. ANF, uh, Albert Crombie and Fitch, good reversal. Nice push back up there towards the 40. We'll see if this one can continue to trend. Another one that I wanted to take a look at, AEO, of course. Nice little setup. I like the, I like the trend line that you get in this stock. And now that we're approaching this, all you want to see is some good volume come into the breakout tomorrow. If we could get um, above kind of this... 36 level, I like it, and we would need to push towards, let's say, 37, 38. Uh, there's not too much on the upside on this stock, but hey, if you want to make yourself 10%, maybe risk very small, it's not a bad looking stock. FSR with a nice breakout today, but pretty much finishing the day in a harmony. Uh, if you look at the hourly, it went up, down, up, down. So I'm just keep watching this one um, with some other names. I want to take a look here at the home improvement area. The home improvement area is one area that I'm going to have to keep an eye out because I see LL starting to build. This is Lumber Liquidator. Keep this one on watch. I really like this daily candle right here. Whenever you get this look, this is called a bullish engulfing candle right here. And this can really start an uptrend. Um, let's, let's draw it a little bit bigger. So that look right there that pattern could really start this uptrend i like the support here 19 you can see it clearly there let's see if it starts pushing tomorrow getting towards 21 and then the next levels from there could be 23 78 i think it could work towards that moving that 200 day moving average where we're at 25 44 let's see if we can make our way towards 25 on this name I'm not saying that it's going to get up there towards 28, but I definitely do think we could get up there towards 25 on LL Lumber Liquidators. And with that being mentioned, I did see this chart that's setting up on the weekly. But the question is, will it keep ripping? I'm not the biggest fan of the story on this stock, but I do think it could continue to making some lift. That's GRWG Grow Generation Corp. It does look good on the weekly. Nice sideways trend. Do we get this push with volume? I'll keep a watch on it. All right, let's go ahead and catch up with the chat. What's up? The back for school shopping. Definitely. Uh, I can't blame you. Back for school shopping is a real thing. It does exist, so we'll keep a watch on that. Uh, Shift just crushed earnings. That's what I like to hear. No, that's a, uh, a kind of a SPAC, an old SPAC now, really starting to get that lift. Nice, nice. That's 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 what we want to see. If you want to know more about this, Noel, definitely come and check out SPACs Attack. That's where we talk everything SPACs. That's at every single morning, guys. Tune in 11 a.m. Eastern to 12. We talk 
everything SPAC. Tomorrow we're going to go in through all these earnings reports and show you specifics. So definitely show up there tomorrow. All right, let's go ahead. Let's get into some of these names. I'm seeing a lot of names flying in the chat. Yes, Papito. The SFT is definitely moving. Can't be mad at that. Uh, PLTR, Benjamin's bringing up. Let's take a look at that one. I've been thinking about dipping my toes now. So the question is, is now the time, right? All right, let's take a look here at the chart, see what we're seeing. One of the things I'd clearly say is that last time we had this run, it was right around 21 when we got the lift. Now we kind of get this sideways trend. We got a nice bullish candle. Sideways day where it went up. It held that trend line. I'm going to look to see if we get a dip towards 2260s, and then I could hold off this low, which this low is 2180. But I think this one could get back above there at 2364. Let's see if this one gets the volume. That's what's really killing PLTR right now. I think if you look here at the bottom, just look at the volume here. Here, I'm going to draw it a little bit bigger so you guys can see it here. Look how the volume keeps declining, declining, declining. We need some volume in this name to really rotate it back up and try to test up there towards those highs. All right, so NIO is another one. Uh, NIO is just hanging out there off the resistance, off the resistance, off the resistance. And whenever you fight resistance multiple times to break out, and I can clearly see it right now that you've tried three times to break out through this level right here. You tried it there. You tried it there. And you also just tried it. I all I, I don't like that look. I think it's going to start pulling back closer towards 40. All right, let's go ahead. Let's catch up with some other names being mentioned. Posh. Posh. I remember that was a dumb money pick. Uh, and it looked like it was a dumb money pick. Not not saying anything bad about, you know, dumb money, but definitely not a good pick. I wonder if they got out of this one. They got in it right here on this gap down. Um, so they're definitely in the red now. I'll be paying attention to their videos, see if they sold out of this one. I honestly, after that point, I didn't really pay attention to that stock. Um, whenever it gets that hype, I was paying attention to see if it got a rip, but it never really did get that move. This is Posh, uh, P-O-S-H. We'll see if it continues and gets back above 35. Right now, definitely on a downtrend. Pave, Pave, I got you, Sophie. A lot of people talking about Pave, uh, infrastructure development play. Um, and, and I mean, clearly, I mean, clearly this is going to get a little bit of a lift. Nice, nice move today. Bounced right off the VWAP twice, held it, got through the highs in the pre-market and never looked back. Now, the big thing for me on the stock like this is I would look at the one hour chart um, because why? Because I think you could get pullbacks towards that one hour support. And if I get a pullback towards that one hour support, I'll definitely be interested so for, the, for me, I'll be looking at 2650s because I see a resistance here. I see this trend line here. I see a breakout from these levels. Now, can we come back and re retrace to 2650s? That to me would be an entry um, from this level. I think it could continue to run, but I'm just going to keep an eye on this one. This is P-A-V-E. This is the global U.S. infrastructure development play. Moderna got murdered. Yeah, it did. It did get murdered a little bit. Pam stocks. I got you in a second, Pam. I'll get towards that. PLTR has earnings on the 12th. That's actually a good thing. Maybe we get that lift towards a, a good push. Then we get a good earnings report and then a good gap up. I'll be paying attention towards it. It's not a bad play for me. Earnings don't matter for AMC. Earnings don't matter for AMC. But I'll tell you one thing that I did find in their earnings that did matter. One thing that I found that did matter was the, the battle with Warner Media, right? And Warner Media deciding that, hey, after 2022, we're going to go back to just theater releases. And this was something that was said by Warner. The real question is, are they going to follow it? Because there's still some movies that they have that are going to come out in the streaming um, in their HBO now, like The Matrix. Um, I know The Matrix is going to get probably some great numbers from home. So the question is... At that point, do they still decide to go through with the decision and what they told AMC? I think they're going to have to battle back because the consumer is getting used to watching these, uh, these theater movies at home. Once we can watch it, that's what we want. And when we want something, we make it happen, guys. So uh, I definitely would pay attention to those. We'll see how it kind of performs. AMC today, how did it perform? 
it went down. I thought it would come up towards that 40. It actually just went right back down to support. And it's going to be tough here. It needs a lot of volume to get it back up there towards the 40. We'll see if it gets back up towards those levels. All right, plug being mentioned. Plug. Plug was actually a stock. I talked about this morning on my uh, on my podcast because it definitely had a nice move yesterday. Let's see how it performed today. Pretty much a sideways day. Not not really much happened. But as you guys can see, this lift was pretty strong and significant. I think it could come back towards the 200-day moving average here on the hourly, which is sitting at 27.98. Yeah, 2798. So I'll look for a pull down towards 28 and then a push back up there through the 30s. FSIL is one you can watch with this one also. I think they trade hand in hand, in hand just to kind of point that out, Le Leilani. You used to have a friend in Leilani. All right, let's go ahead. Let's keep going. Um, Sophie, Sophie wanted to call out PRTS and Pam Stonks. Pam Stonks on, on. I don't even know on. Uh, let's take a look here. I have never traded this stock. Let's take a look. All right. So it looks like uh, we did see a nice push on up there and a pull back. Let's see if it comes towards the resistance. A stock like this that has a lot of gaps, you see a lot of gaps. I'll go ahead and I'll try to use a weekly so I can measure out a little bit better where the support and resistance are. So I can see this downtrend that we're coming to. I think you could pull back closer towards that 40 now that you had that gap. See if you get to pull back closer towards this level, and then you get that breakout. So you had that gap up here, right? And so what I'd be looking for is does it come back towards this level and then give you that nice breakout look? Because that's going to be kind of the look that I'd be looking for. If it does get that lift, uh, I'll be interested. I would want it to actually close that gap first, then get back above this high, which is 46.29. What's going on, guys? Thoughts on Fubo? Fubo's ripping, man. I never listened to Framer. <laughs> you see what I did there. Um, but let's go ahead. Let's keep going. Uh, what's your views on Romeo? Ali, Ali, Romeo could make a run, a short squeeze. But until they get their management situation um, under their belt, I would just, I would just wait here, guys. Um, wait till you see that squeeze. If you do want to try to, you know, catch the bottom of a knife, yeah, you could go for it and kind of call this the bottom right here, uh, 655. Then just go off of that level and really stick tight. I don't have no problem with that. Um, you're, you're taking an approach, you're taking a process, and you think you could get a squeeze. That can happen. Now, really, I, I think this stock could come back down closer towards five before you get that reversal. But really, nobody knows right now, especially with management problems. And that's what you're getting with the CEO stepping down. Use earnings, Max. Max is definitely a loyal fan out there. I, I don't know the use earnings, but I'll take a look for you. Um, let's take a look here. Let's see what we got. See what we got in Unity. Um, a lot of people like Unity. You know, uh, I've heard so many good things from a lot of different kind of traders out there. It's not necessarily a stock I've traded, but let's take a look here. Uh, Unity, the world's leading platform for creating operative and interactives, real-time 3D content. Today announced second quarter 2021 revenues of 273.6 uh, million, which is up 48% from the year prior uh, ahead of guidance. This marks the 11th consecutive com quarter of 30 percent or greater growth as the company crosses 1 billion in annual revenue run rate. Uh, Unity is actually increasing the full year guidance for 2021. So that shows a great positive here. Let's see how the stock is reacting in after hours. All right, let me go ahead and pull up that chart here and see how we're moving on Unity. Uh, Honestly, I, I expect it up, but not as not as up as I thought it would be. Um, that's a nice little flag pattern here. Let's see if it breaks out of that flag pattern while we're on the show. Uh, we're getting towards 430, so I'll have to wrap up here. Uh, but definitely, guys, this is something to keep on watch. Nice earnings report. Let's take a look at the daily. Where were we on the daily? We we're right by resistance. Uh, so the big key is can we get – through that 112 you see multiple times to get through that 112 it tried to get through those levels let's see if it starts getting through those levels now um, right now we're we got up there to a high of 112 
literally exactly, and then it pulled back. Let's see if we get through those levels. All right, guys, it's probably going to do it for me today. I just want to make sure that I didn't miss out on anything I wanted to talk about. Really quickly, uh, don't forget, there's been also some discount plays making moves. B-R, uh, B-U-R-L, this is Burlington Coat Factory. Not a bad play. Nice little breakout candle there on B-U-R-L. I'm going to be watching this one for pullbacks closer towards 340s to see if we can get a lift back above 350s. And if you take a look also at DLTR, uh, Dollar Tree, nice little push off of that. I think it's going to come back and close this gap. You see this gap right here, guys, where it gapped down? I think it might come up to close that gap. So I'm going to be watching this play to see if I can get a pullback closer towards, let's say, 100. If I can get it in at 100, I don't mind risking down towards the low right now of 98.18. If we could get this move right back up there towards 106, that's what I'd be looking for on this name to close that gap, close that shadow. We'll keep an eye. <laughs> we'll keep a, a close aim. My name is Burl. <laughs> there you go, Burl. Burlington. Yes, yes, Burlington's one to keep on watch, guys. Um, with that being said, uh, you can also look at some other kind of discount stores. Uh, you can look at Ali. Um, let's see if that one starts running. That's actually a nice one. Look how it has the, the weekly consolidation for about three, three months we're talking about. So it's actually 10 months here on the weekly. Let's see if we break out of this 10-month kind of trend and really start trending here on the Ollie. I'll keep an eye on this chart just because you got multiple highs to go off of a 90 level really to see if it gets above 95 again. And I'll keep an eye on this one. BJ, DG, definitely breaking out. Target's been a monster lately. We'll keep an eye out on all these. Walmart's starting to push up. I did see that one today on the weekly, really pushing. So we'll see if that one can get through 150s tomorrow. And like always, traders, what we do is try to find the story because the story is everything. And the new investor out there wants to know the story. Yes, you're going to have to learn some of the technicals. Yes, you need to know some fundamentals. Do you need to know everything in there? I don't think so. I think you need to combine variables to help yourself get into good probability outlooks. And that's how we go ahead and win. Today, I went and took some more profit off on RSI, getting almost a top profit of the day there. Not mad. I got 28%. First profit was at 20. I'll be looking to get 30 on the rest. But if I can't get it, I'm okay with 20% gain on that trade. And I'll go ahead and just keep doing the game, keep playing the game, trying to be ahead of the trends and ahead of the story. Like always, guys, use your three variables, the story, the fundamentals, and technicals to get you in the best probability situation, and that's how you go ahead and nail the trades. Like always, guys, smash the thumbs up. I'll see you guys on Friday, and if you guys need to find me during the week, I'm always here. Tomorrow, live trading on Benzinga. I'll be there. Come ask me some questions. I'll see you guys at 9.15 a.m. tomorrow. Up next, coming up. You got Cannabis Insiders, probably already started. Go see some cannabis stocks. Let the cannabis boys know I sent you guys over. Always love that show, and we'll see you next time on Money.